Well, good morning. I hope your day is starting off well. Um, today we're going to continue in our study of Psalm 34, and we come to verse 11. And uh, this verse does have something to do with children. And uh, just kind of wanted to say something here before I begin that. We started here at River Hills, we started meeting as a church um, this past Sunday morning, Sunday morning service only. And uh, we're spreading out, we're using hand sanitizer, trying to take some precautions. But I did want to say something, if, if by chance you have, you come to our church and you have small children, babies, little kids, um, and that is making you nervous about bringing them into the service right now because we don't have a nursery at this point. Um, if your fear is my kids are going to be rambunctious, they're going to make noise and people are going to get upset, please don't um, think that way. We, we want you to bring your little kids. We don't care if they make noise. We don't care if they scream uh, or whatever. There may be a point you can just pull them out if you need to. But little noises and things, it's great having children in the service. It's wonderful. Uh, personally, I love it. And so please, um, if, if that's something bothering you, don't be bothered by that. Bring your kids. Um, it's a good way. It, it's a learning curve for you as a parent to do that. It's a learning curve for your kids and maybe even for the church, but it's, it's good. You're, you have your children with you worshiping the Lord. And over the long haul, that makes a big difference. So please bring them. Put those concerns to the side. Um, so let me pray at that, and then we'll, we'll look at verse 11. Father, we do thank you uh, for your goodness, your grace, your, um, the fact that you're always with us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the salvation that we have in him. Lord, we look to you. We depend upon you um, during these days. We ask for you to give wisdom to our leaders and our local leaders, our state and national leaders, Lord, give wisdom to them, give them understanding, help them to make good and right decisions that are honoring to you. Um, Father, we pray for your church during this time that you would give wisdom to pastors and leaders and churches as well. Um, Lord, may we use these days to continue to, pro to proclaim um, the Lordship of Christ over all things um, to all peoples. Lord, we ask for your help as we study in verse 11. Please give us understanding. Help us to obey this verse as we do the other ones. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in Psalm 34, verse 11. David writes, Come, O children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Now, in the psalm, David has already mentioned the fear of the Lord, describing some of the benefits of fearing the Lord, and it's, it's obvious from the psalm that he himself fears the Lord. And so now he's turning to the children, and he's saying to them that he is going to teach them the fear of the Lord. Now, I'm going to do more than one video on this particular verse, and I'm going to tell you up front that I'm going to do a little meddling here. And that is to say that I'm going to get into your business just a little bit here. Um, or as some would, some would say, I'm going to step on your toes just a bit. And first of all, I want us to remember that the Word of God is described as a two-edged sword. And as a sword, the Word cuts and pierces. But His Word does not cut and pierce in order to harm us, but in order to help us. So... His word doesn't just hack us up and whack us up and leave us to die, but rather his word is very precise, cuts us just like a, a surgeon would, exactly where we need to be cut so that we are put right and live as we are meant to live as God's people who are to glorify him um, and represent him on this earth. And as I look here at what David writes in verse 11, and as I've been thinking about this verse, I am thankful that God's word um, cuts like a sword, that it pierces my own heart, because you see, my own toes are stepped on here in this verse. There is needed conviction in my own life um, to take seriously what David writes here as I think about my own role as a father uh, for my own children. There's also needed repentance for me 
in this verse as well as I think about areas in my own life in which I can become lazy when it comes to teaching my children the fear of the Lord. Now, it's not certain here as to whether or not David is referring to his own children. Um, they might have been a little too young, perhaps. I don't know. Or if he's just referring to children in general whom he had an influence over. Let me say, if you are a parent, um, especially if you're a parent with children, small children, or children just in general in your home, please take this verse very seriously. Specifically for us fathers, if you are a father, the weight of this father, Christian father, lies with you. You and I, we are the spiritual leaders in our homes. But also, let me say this, if you're not a parent, or if you have children but they're grown and they're already out of the house, you still have an influence over children. Um, it may be children in your local church. It may be children uh, that are your nieces, nephews, grandchildren. It might be neighborhood children. It could be all kinds of different children. But you need to take this verse seriously as well. And in saying this, that, that we need to take this verse seriously, I want to make clear that I'm not saying or not, I'm not implying that we don't need to take any other verse in the Bible just as seriously. To be clear, all of Scripture needs to be taken seriously. But the reason I'm highlighting this here is because if we are doing this, what this verse says, if we are teaching our children the fear of the Lord, if we're actually doing that, then automatically we are going to be taking all of Scripture seriously because we cannot do this while treating the Word of God in an apathetic, who cares kind of a way. Another reason I'm highlighting taking this verse seriously is because, quite frankly, I think we need a good kick in the pants when it comes to this point. We as Christian parents, as Christian adults, just by and large, are not getting this done. We are not teaching our children the fear of the Lord. And there may be a lot of reasons for this. We can probably think of quite a few that, that why we're failing by and large at this. But I cannot help but think that one of the main reasons or one of the top reasons for this is because we as parents or we as adults, we are not learning the fear of the Lord ourselves. You see what David says here in this verse is not something that can be faked. When it comes to this, we might have a good fake, but that's only going to be short-lived because we're soon going to be found out. You see, because the fear of the Lord affects all areas of life, it will be very evident to our children very quickly if what we are attempting to say to them at points does not match up with what they see in our own lives. They're going to catch that. And so listen, the place to start when it comes to this verse is to make sure that you, Christian father, Christian mother, Christian adult, are learning the fear of the Lord yourself. That's the place to start. And so for today, I leave us, me, you, Christian parents, Christian adults, I leave us with one question to be thinking about. Again, David writes, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So notice he says, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And so here is the question. Are we even in a position to do this? To teach our children the fear of the Lord? This requires some self-examination. In other words, don't think that you can teach your children the fear of the Lord if you are not learning the fear of the Lord yourself. For number one, if you attempt to teach your children the fear of the Lord, but without learning the fear of the Lord yourself, that's not going to last long because, listen, you're going to be driven by guilt rather than conviction, and that's going to quickly fizzle away. And then number two, if you're not learning the fear of the Lord yourself, you will all you're really going to be doing is teaching your children how to become a hypocrite like yourself. Therefore, to attempt to teach your children the fear of the Lord, but without learning the fear of the Lord yourself, may end up doing more harm than good. And so think about these things. And of course, if you are still, you know, you're listening, you're still under the wrath of God for your sins, then the very first thing that you need to do, you need to take refuge in the Lord. 
So don't run from the Lord in fear. Run to the Lord in fear, in humility and repentance. Cast yourself upon the rock of salvation, who is Jesus Christ. Believe in Him. Honor Him. Bow to Him, who is Lord over all. Hope you have a great day.